welcome back to a draft. Uh, it's been a while since I've done one, and pretty good way to start off my first Sorin. Um, I guess if there weren't Sorin, I'd take Lingering Souls, but there's a Sorin, so <laughs> let's force Black White and hope <laughs> Lingering Souls tables. Um, although obviously passing the Lingering Souls is pretty bad when you just took a Sorin, but oh well. Um, I suppose it's good that the good cards in this pack are mostly in white. There's a Soul Caesar, which is nice. But, um, uh, yeah, I just don't really like blue. I mean, that's nice, that's nice. Burden of Guilt's just removed, and I think I'm just going to take that. Um, marginally better than Death Caress, I think. I don't really know, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not going to take an off color card, so I think I'm just going to basically force Sorin. It's not. <laughs> An ideal strategy I'd normally recommend, but sure, I'll go for it. And this guy taps on taps, yeah. I don't know, just taps, but still. Um, I quite like this. Uh, I like tricksy things. I like being able to pass without tapping out. Hopefully by passing this, we're kind of forcing the person to our left into blue, because we just passed the Soul Caesar and the Skite as well. Um, is it a Skite? I can't remember what it is. It's a Nephalia thing. Sentinels of Grandandra, as it used to be called back in the day. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to keep forcing white, really. Uh, I suppose it's worth noting there's zero black cards in this pack, so we might end up having to splash Sorin, in which case... Uh, I'm not sure what cards I'd be, but if I take... Um, if I see a fixed land, I can't remember what it's called, Evolving Wilds, then I will probably take it. Oh, okay. That card's good, that card's good. Um, I guess I take the fourth pick fires on death, and like I could be black, uh, sorry, white, red, splash black, or I could just forget the sor. No, wait, <laughs> what combination? I could always forget the fires on death, but I guess I don't have to be black necessarily. I mean, both the black cards in this pack are awful, and there was no black in the last uh, pack, but then again, that obviously means going in the second pack, I can just take all the black cards. But for now, yeah, I'm just going to take the removal. Although green white is a pretty good strategy, um, I think I just prefer to have the removal to the creature. And here we have um, you might have noticed I've been reading some of the cards. I'm not too well versed with the format as of yet because I haven't had that much chance to play it. I know the first two packs now at least, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I'm just going to take this guy, actually. Because the good thing about black-white... Obviously, taking the fires doesn't mean I'm necessarily in red. But the good thing about black-white is that you kind of are happy with the cards that other people don't want. Like, village cannibals and stuff. Like, you can take all the crappy cards that people don't want because they're trying to force green-white and take all the travel preps. Um, but yeah, I quite like this card. And there's not really much in a pack. So, I prefer that to a ripper. Oh, and there's the Evolving Wilds. Also, a Drog Skull Captain. But I'm already in enough colours, and I will play Evolving Wilds regardless of the deck. So, yeah, I'm quite happy to pick that up. And, wow, well, more white goodies. Which, A, tells me, <laughs> luckily, white is a colour to be in, and B, is annoying because I've been passing a lot of white already, so it's pretty much going to solidify whoever's to my left into white. Um, although I took this guy last time, I'm going to take this this time, just for curve issues. I mean, I, I don't like too many 4-drops, and I've already got two. And with a high bongle, I'm kind of looking to be an aggro deck, I guess. So I'll just take 3 power, 2, 3 power, 3 mana, 2 power flyer. And... I don't have any vampires yet, but I could pick them up. I don't really know if I want this. Um, yeah, I suppose you can't have... Like, this card's not that good. I, I always find that you just don't get the vampires. Um, and even if you do, like it's a 4-4 on turn 4, which is okay, but then doesn't attack until turn 5, and when you don't activate it's just a Grey Ogre. Whereas this guy, you just, I mean, even if you gain 2 life and get 1-1 off it, it's still fine. And let's just keep <laughs> cutting white cards, I guess, rather than take a card I won't play. So yeah, I mean, I'm definitely in white at the moment. I'm actually still open to anything, really. I could open 
a, a blue or a green bomb and just switch. Because I've just got five card white base and an evolving wilds. So theoretically it could be anything. It's not like my five white cards are good, but you never know how a draft turns out. And the way, like the amount of white I was passing there means I could be short on playables pack two, so I need to decide fairly quickly. But then again, like I said, the fact that I didn't pass any black means hopefully I can just pick up all the black and then take white in the third pack again. And we are back. Um, I don't know what Archer the Lost does. That's a big derf. I guess Young Wolf is the best card in the pack. <laughs> it's not really much I want to hate out. And again, I don't really like Young Wolf and I might just lose to an 8 8. So. Yeah, you rarely just lose to a Young Wolf. <laughs> Whereas I have just lost to an 8 8. So. I'm happy to play against Young Wolf, I think. I think people overrate Young Wolf. I don't know why people think it's good. Like. <laughs> It's not really a 2 for 1. People seem to think it's a 2 for 1. It's only a 2 for 1 if your opponent has a bunch of X1s. And in that case, you only get a 2 2 out of it. Like, it's still not amazing. One of the 2s is a 2 2 creature. And. I guess that's the card I least want to play against. Mm, so, yeah, at the moment, like I was saying. Got a nice white base. Ideally, I'll be black white because of the big bomb. But I mean, the only other black I've got is a high bomb ghoul, and I guess fires on death. But looks like the mana might be a little sketchy. I would like at least one more fixer. Opening a black white jewel, not opening like getting a sixth pick black white jewel or something would be ideal. Or a red white jewel is that possible? Yeah, it's off colors, isn't it? So black white or red white. And sanctuary cat. <laughs> I might play that. You never know. I wouldn't 95% of the time, but. In fact, 95 is probably low. I wouldn't 98% of the time. But sometimes you just want a 1-2 one for, one, two for 2. Quite often you don't, because he's smaller than every creature that costs 2 or more. Well, he might trade with some, but generally smaller. And I doubt I'll be barring any doors. So yeah, I'll hide those for now. I've noticed in past videos that I have a bad habit of not hiding things. Right, okay. Well, Sturmgeist is a blue bomb, but not the blue bomb I was looking for to want to change. Um, because there are two perfectly reasonable white cards in here that I will definitely play. Um, it's just a case of which one. And because I've already got Burden and like four drops, I think I'm just going to take Bonds, just so I don't have to tie up my mana. I think Bonds might be slightly better anyway. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure which of those two is better. They're both really good, and they're both cards I'll happily take over a Sturmgeist that I probably won't play. I'm trying to think what card would make me want to switch, but I can't think of one right now. Um, guys, catches rig. I got some slack for... Did I mean to say slack? No, I got some stick for not taking that in a draft once. Um, but I think I might not take it again. The cards I'm looking at are Cloistered Youth and Victim of the Night. And I think this deck actually just wants the Cloistered Youth. I just want bodies. Because I've already got like <laughs> the Planeswalker and the removal and the removal and the removal. And I think this isn't even that good removal. I look like I'm mainly white. And I'd rather just have a two drop. So let's go with that. And not a whole lot here. I might just take that guy's flame. I could end up being almost mono white, splash black, splash red. Forget about the high bongle, forget about this gruesome deformity that I probably won't play anyway. And yeah, I do quite like guy's flame. I think it's better than one of these two, which I might play. So, like, well, I definitely would play moment heroism, but I'll get more chances to pick those up. Whereas guy's flame is quite a premium card. And there's a guy's catcher's rig. I think this time I'll take it, just because there's not much else in the pack. It's a shame to pass Gavin Township, but I'll get over it. So yeah, what do I want now? I guess I want... I guess I'm happy to just get past white cards for the rest of the draft, but it's not going to happen, because I passed so much white. 
pack one, so I'm not sure what I want out of the rest of this pack. Hopefully the Shimmering Grotto I open tables. Uh, yeah, this pack's basically empty. Like, there's an Abbey Griffin that I probably won't play. And then a Ghoul Razor that I might potentially play. Even though I just said I don't really want to be black. But I might end up having to be black, so I'll go with it anyway. Just end up with a really awkward mana base. Then again, if I do table that Shimmering Grotto, I guess that's already two fixes, and if I'm only playing these two red cards as, as my red cards, I can, like, white, actually, even though it's my main colour, technically, I've only got single colours anymore. So I could have, like, 17 lands, two fixes, and then a 9-6 split or something like that. Um, there's a lot of options here, actually. Well, there's Travis Amulet that I was saying I kind of want more fix, but then I don't really. Then there's a Guy's Flame, which would make it even more awkward because I just took a black card. And then there's Abbey Griffin, Pitchman Devils. Well, I suppose I'd take Guy's Flame and Pitchman Devils, but then there's the Abbey Griffin, which is just a safe pick. But, yeah, I think I'm just going to keep going for the awkward mana base. Like I said before, Abbey Griffin isn't a card I really want to play anyway. Like, four four drops is just about the max, and I've already got three. So Well, not the max, but it's like the number I would like to play. So any more than that, and you just lose games where you get stuck on three land for a few turns. So yeah, I'm just going to keep taking Guy's Flames and hope that the mana awkwardness does not come back to punish me. Yet more Abbey Griffins, and the Abbey Griffin will be happy to hear. I think this is finally his time to shine, because there's nothing else in the pack, except for Parallel Lives, which I'm unsurprisingly not going to play. So yeah, looking at the deck now, I still want two drops. <laughs> um, probably not going to play these two. It looks like I am going to be the white, splash red, splash black deck. So I really just want two and three drops. I just want small creatures to fill out the curve. Um, even cheap removal would be fine. <laughs> Not that there is any, but <laughs> like <laughs> Bonds of Faith or um, Volley. I can't remember the name. Brimstone Volley would be ideal. But other than that, there's really nothing. And I'm going to pause so I can stop filling space. Do I have any tokens? No. Well, yes, but I think ideally Sorin is winning by himself. Um, do I have any creatures to sack? No. Do I want to Riot Devils? No. So I guess the one I'm most likely to play is Alta's Reap if I do get a bunch of creatures. Good with Alguard Inquisitor and just about nothing else. Um, I guess this is the most likely to get played off the bunch. I'm usually happy to play against a blood crazed neonate, especially with these guys' flames. I'm not too bothered by a plant zombie, considering most of my guys either fly or are a planeswalker. And I uh, might as well take this out of the draft in case. You know, there's a spider spawning deck to my right. And didn't take it the first time because they thought they'd table it. <laughs> also, it looks like I didn't get that shimmering grotto, so. Never mind. Someone else obviously wanted the fix. I suppose Jimmy Rotto should go before ninth anyway. I don't know what this does, but it's foil and rare, so I'll take it. Right, forgive the moment of silence as I read it. You could say stony silence. Way um yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I think I should probably hide it, considering I won't play a main deck. I might board it in. My opponent's got four rune casters. No, rune charters. Is it chanters? Ca I never remember. Rune chanters pikes. There we go. But um, for now, I think the stony silence can sit in silence in the sideboard. Well, there's a wooden stake, though. I guess I do want people to play that against me, because I have my stony silence. So. Same goes for Celador. 
So I'll take the land. Yeah, my deck's not great. Looking at it now, it's like it has solid cards, but there's no real cohesion between them. It's just some solid cards that aren't enough to make a deck. I've also only got 16 playables, and that's including the two zombies that I don't want to play, so it's looking a bit awkward at the moment. Um, as bad as it sounds, I think I actually just really want a village bell ringer right now. <laughs> like, it's reasonable with Geist Flames in that you can kill a 2-2 with it. It blocks, which I want, because most of my guys fly or are planeswalkers. And it's just a body. Like, it's that or tribute to hunger, and I'm trying to keep black as low as possible. So I think I might actually first pick a village bell ringer. It might even table, but... You know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, wow. Well, um, <laughs> I'm glad I took it, I guess, because this pack has... Zero cards I want to take. Um, I guess this is good with Village Bell Ringer. So yeah, you get the nod. This is just silly now. I mean, <laughs> really? <laughs> what am I going to take? Walking Corpse? Yeah, I think I have to. Never mind. And it looks like we're black white again. <laughs> Jeez. There's <laughs> basically nothing again. Don't really want to take corpse on because all my guys are two twos and cost three or more and <laughs> reanimate themselves. So yeah, I just add to my zombie thing. I just don't have enough playables now to not play the zombies, so I think I might just yeah, keep going with the zombie theme. Although close closer to use a better card, I'm not sure if I'll just want the zombie here. I guess with two gore razors. Yeah, I would just rather have the zombie. I mean, if nothing else, they block. <laughs> Let me draw my Sorin and hopefully take control with that. And I suppose Voiceless Spirit is a decent body, not a 2 2 for 2. So, yeah. I don't really have enough guys to make moment of heroism good. If I had... Yeah, I guess I almost do now. Yeah, I think I'm now enough guys to make moment of heroism good, so I'll take one if I see one. But right now I just really want <laughs> either a Shimmering Grotto or um, the Land Search Artifact, whose name I can't remember. I'm not very good with names, you might have guessed. One Manor Artifact, Sacks for One, to find a Basic. That's the one I'm talking about. Hopefully I remember the name of the next pack because it will contain one. But until then... Oh, there it is. Um, no. I have no curses and I saw no curses that I'd want to hate out. I mean, I would have taken the black curse if I saw it, but... Um, I guess... Take the Scarecrow? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. I won't play it, but... Mm, then again... This card's decent. Yeah, I'll just take the decent card. We are still drawing dead, effectively. Um, I almost want to take that spider spawning, but I guess because I got that mulch and burning out of it, I'm really late. Then there must be no spider spawnings immediately to my left, so... <laughs> I might actually just take this. Just because I need a playable still. And the way the rest of the packs have gone. I'm not sure I'll get one. Um, guess this is a card that's most likely to beat me. Yeah, this draft has gone awfully. But the fact that the packs had no playables hopefully means that other people's decks will be a bit bad. So... Yeah, you never know. I mean, it's got enough cards for a deck that can theoretically win games, it's just that the manners 
really awkward if I do play all these cards. And then I'm playing cards that I don't really want to play, like... Like, Mana Skeleton, Double Walking Corpse. Mm. Yeah, it's weird that there was so much good white in the first pack, and then absolutely nothing in the rest of the packs, but... Who knows? Just the way it goes sometimes. I'll just pause until deck building now, so you don't have to watch the last few picks. Right, so let's see what we have. Um, I think it's just going to be a case of put 23 cards down, play 23 cards, done. Um, I suppose I could play the Deformity. But yeah, as you may have heard me say during the draft, this draft did not go so well. Twenty. Oh, the red cards. <laughs> right, got a bit panic there. Twenty-three. Do I want to play Greece and Deformity? Not really. I suppose I could. Wouldn't know what to cut though. I hate it in, in these situations where you get to like <laughs> twenty-three cards, seven of which are borderline playable, and then you can't decide which one to cut. Um. Yeah, I'm mostly happy with that. I mean, this is almost a 16 land deck just because of all the 2 and 3 drops, but because I have 3 colours I can't really afford to do that. So let's see what Modo suggests. 7-7-2. Seven, seven, um, I think I like 3 mountains for 3 red cards, so 6-7-3. That gives me 7-8-4 sources respectively, kind of, not really. Um, but yeah, I don't have any double whites, so 7 should be fine for that. 8 should also be fine. The only one I'd be worried about is red, but I wouldn't want to go below 7 or 8 for the other two. So, yeah. Done and submit, and see you for the first round.